lives in a pineapple under the sea. Splash, splash, square fish! And yellow and porous is he. Hey everybody, this is 22 Tiger Dude. I'm here with my guest star. J53518. Don't you forget it, bub. And we're here to review. Welcome to the Chum Bucket, requested by the Mr. Minecraft Mania. At 3Ms, that don't make a right. All right. But let's get started. What is Welcome to the Chum Bucket about? This is a story where SpongeBob is kidnapped by Plankton to work at the Chum Bucket to make Mr. Krabs look so pathetic and realizes that SpongeBob misses the Krusty Krab, even Mr. Krabs. So SpongeBob's going to get used to working at the Chum Bucket or he's fired by Plankton or tortured miserably. Review of the plot. I think this, I, this is a good episode. It's a good episode of an idea. I like the premise of, you know, you know, SpongeBob loves the Krusty Krab, and it's an interesting idea that, you know, what would happen if Plankton really is a what-if story? You know, what if SpongeBob were the chum bucket? And you, I mean, the poor little sponge has a good iron will. And he's willing to resist Plankton, but Plankton's always able to coax her little sponge friend to make the chum buckets of chum, which is disgusting as hell. If you don't know what chum is, then I'm not going to explain to you what it is. But he's tortured, he's used, he can't get used to to how the chum bucket works. He's always thinking about the Krusty Krab, and I feel bad for the sponge. I feel bad for Mr. Krabs, who's his best student, and, I mean, student, best chef. Well, I mean, with, with just Squidward. I mean, Squidward's probably happy right there, little squid bastard. But it's a good episode. It's more dramatic and more sad than funny because you, you see SpongeBob suffer. I mean, we don't want SpongeBob to get hurt, but, yeah, he could be so damn annoying. We don't want them to see you hurt a little sponge. I still like it. It's a good episode. So, Tiger Dude, what did you think of Welcome to the Chum Bucket? Welcome to the Chum Bucket is a really awesome episode. I really <laughs> love this episode. Welcome to the Chum Bucket is really good, although I would have to disagree. A J5, I think it's half and half. It's half funny, half dramatic, so I think it's half and half of both of those genres. But to me, it really blends that so well. When the episode is funny, when it adds the humor, it's really funny. Especially when SpongeBob is trying to act like a spoiled brat when he's with Plankton. That's definitely the most humorous part. And then you have the sad moments, such as when SpongeBob and Patrick, uh, sorry, SpongeBob and Mr. Krabs are singing the musical number, which is definitely a very touching moment. It gets uh. me a little choked up. And the musical number is by far one of the best and most memorable SpongeBob musical numbers to ever come. I just love it. I just really enjoy it every time, and it really d does show you how Mr. Krabs and SpongeBob are not only close as, you know, just the boss and employee, but as friends, which is what I really dug about this episode. And, of course, you have the premise of Plankton when they use SpongeBob's brain inside a robotic SpongeBob which I thought was actually pretty clever and something, you know, just something very creative. This episode is funny. It could be dramatic sometimes. I wouldn't say dramatic. I would say more heartwarming. I think that's the best way to describe it. More heartwarming <laughs> to, to make you care for SpongeBob, Mr. Krabs. I know J5 is crying. Grab a tissue, J5. <laughs> Ah, save SpongeBob. The kitchen is not a home. That's even when I'm all alone. Yeah, I loved pretty much everything about this episode. Now, my only problem is that there could be a moment where I thought the episode did yep. get a little boring. It got a little dragged for me, and it was a little bit rushed in the end, but. Overall, I do really love this episode, so I'm going to give Welcome to the Chum Bucket a 9.5 out of 10. I loved it. It's a really great episode. Four out of five stars. My only flaw is played as a dick to our little yellow sponge. Save him! Save him! <laughs> yeah, let's go on to Frank and Doodle now. Go to Mama, 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 Mama.
If you've never seen Frank and Doodle, then you probably are wondering, is J5 high? What the hell is he on? That's, a, that's what Doodle Bob makes and the episode Frank and Doodle. So Frank and Doodle is requested by the Mr. Minecraft Medium. What is the plot for Frank and Doodle, good old J5, sir? Well, the episode starts with SpongeBob and Patrick having fun in the in Bikini Bottom. When all of a sudden, zip, we start with Zip Painter in the boat, drawing with the magic pencil, and drops into Bikini Bottom with SpongeBob and Patrick. As the, and, and the, as the narrator Du Bois I just did said, um, somehow a painter or an artist loses his magical pencil, which falls between Patrick and SpongeBob, which they intend to be nautical nonsense happens when they use it and find out it has magical powers. The ability to bring any drawing they put on the ground or sketch to life becomes real. But SpongeBob gets two characters and creates an old doppelganger, kind of a bizarre old SpongeBob called Doodle Bob, in which his creation, just like the title says, just like the Frankenstein lore, goes insane and cracks havoc in Bikini Bottom to the point where he races Patrick's butt crack. What the fuck? So it's up to Patrick and SpongeBob to stop Franken Doodle or Doodle Bob, me, my mama, from destroying and erasing, literally, Bikini Bottom off the face of the ocean or the earth. Me, What do I think of the episode? It's a. I'm going to do it one more time. Anyway, I think this is a great episode. It's a classic Spongebob episode. The jokes are great. Spongebob and Patrick have so much stupid fun with a pencil to the point where they draw a Squidward drawing. Uh, that gave me nightmares a little bit as a kid. The Sponge Rock. Oh, God. But it is interesting that the, that the creators had a lot of fun with this episode. It's funny. It's stupid. It's Patrick and Spongebob. What would you expect? And the idea of a Frankendoodle, kind of interesting how they introduce it from a 2D and give them kind of a 3D perspective. It's funny what they can do with the pencil from redrawing themselves to SpongeBob decorating his bed to putting a crown on Gary. Goodbye, sweet prince. There's a lot of fun with this pencil episode. I loved it. There were no flaws in this episode. Tiger Dude, what'd you think of of the one and only Frankendoodle? See, I don't even know what I'm saying. As for Frank and Doodle, though, I also love this episode, and I'm just going to already say it out of the way. Usually I mention my flaws later when it comes to a good Spongebob episode, but I'm just going to say it already. I have no flaws with this episode. None. Everything about this episode, from start to finish, is absolutely perfect, and as much as I loved Welcome to the Chum Bucket, I loved Frank and Doodle more than that episode. It was very well written. It's very unique. It's something you don't, see, you've never seen a cartoon before. They definitely explored that idea. Something just very wacky. And like what you said, J5, I totally agree with you. The writers just wanted to have a lot of fun, just go all out with this episode. It's very simple, yet there are so many things going on in a simple plot mm -hmm. that it's just very fun and it just keeps you entertained. So I just really love the idea of Bunjo and Patrick finding this giant pencil. And the whole mm -hmm. thing with the artist from the beginning of the episode to the ending of the episode, just plain hysterical. Stupid, weird, but it's plain hysterical. I laugh my ass off from start to finish. It's a very well-written plot. Doodle Bob was great. And the finale when, Spon when SpongeBob is trying to get rid of Doodle Bob, really good, very funny, and a little bit exciting from there. And also, it is a pretty creepy episode because when I was a kid, uh, Doodle Bob, he did give me nightmares. I am going to actually say that. He really creeped me out. He actually came with some of my nightmares. And even now that I'm older, the character still creeps me out. But props to the writers for actually creating a creepy character because, yeah, that is not a very happy character to look at. <laughs> just from the plan of the episode, everything about it is just plain great. Nothing is wrong with it. It's hilarious from start to finish. It's well executed. It's well paced. I'm giving this episode, obviously, a 10 out of 10. Everything is awesome about this episode. Same here. Five out of five golden stars. Golden noodle stars. 
You mean five out of five? We have No, I say five out of five because I'm actually civilized in that doodle clone. As always, it's always a pleasure and honor, my friend. Thank you, man. Please subscribe to j 5 h channel. I will leave a link okay. in the description below. Uh, see ya. Later. And he's Tiger Dude, because say the old, my friend. Tiger Power! Power!